Hey guys, uh, on the back end of last week, we finished up our undercoat on all the walls. We've also done a brick retainer out the back um, and a beautiful detailed brick staircase. So that was the end of last week. And now this week we're indoors. So you can see behind me, the herringbone floor started to go down. Um, it's, looking, it's looking really cool, really beautiful. A lot has gone into the set out of this floor. So we brought it from the hallway right down through the middle. Um, so as you go basically towards the back, it invites you out. Everything's nice and centered. And then this herringbone floor is then just gonna float out to the sides. Um, so that's a big one for today. The guys will just about finish this today. At the same time, the tilers are down the side uh, doing our side entry tiling and our solid stone treads. So that's the start of this week. At the end of this week, we are basically ready for cabinetry in store. Now, delays, we like talking about delays and things that aren't going right. Cabinetry is looking like it's gonna be about two weeks delayed, which is a pain in the backside, especially this close to Christmas. Um, there's a lot of work that has to happen on the back of cabinetry. You can imagine stone bench tops, plumbing fit off, electrical fit off, even the final coat of paint and the sanding of our floors. So um, again, it's like the doors and windows, we're gonna try and make it work that it's not gonna affect us too much and see how we go. Okay, so our pool, we got a separate DA for that was approved two weeks ago. Um, had a bit of back and forth with the pool contractor in terms of depth and specs and just overall size and, and layout of the pool. So there was a bit of back and forth, so we've lost a, a week or so there. Now we're just waiting on a installation date really for the pool so that we can lock everything in trade-wise, make sure that we've got our six weeks curing time before we can start tiling and then try and get everything done before the end of the project. What are you talking about? We've got a hole in the backyard. With all this rain, we've got a pool. Yeah, actually, you're not wrong. We do have a pool, but we unfortunately can't stick tiles to the mud. Ah, yeah. So rock and clay holds its shape quite well, even when it's full of water, at least up to the rock level. Um, so it can sit there, it can sit there for months. It doesn't really matter. The excavation's completely covered. So we've maintained our access. Um, then yeah, just got a lot of fire up, as Nick said, under the contractor's backside to get him here and get it in so we're swimming at Christmas time. That's the, that's the real goal. Dream. Obviously Christmas time's pool time. Everyone's doing pools, everyone's got their discount from their local pool supplier, so it's busy. But yeah, we're gonna get slotted in there nice and early with a bit of luck. Uh, I'm absolutely loving this engineered floor that's going down now. It's a, a herringbone or parquetry style board. Uh, it comes engineered so it's pre-finished. It's tongue and groove, so you get a really flat surface. Uh, and the process for laying it, a lot of it's on the back of our slab, so we've got to make sure our slab is level and flat, and then we're just direct sticking it, direct sticking it by troweling on glue. Um, the glue is highly flexible. Uh, it also has a high, um, I guess, application thickness. So if there are any deviations in our slab, the glue is going to get it out to make sure everything is really flat and solid. Uh, I mean, there's lots of different floors out there, but Herringbone's not one that we do a lot of the time. So we've got the guys from Madeira, Madeira Floors here doing our install. We generally do the install ourselves, but these guys have the method down pat. Like this thing is going down quick. It's going down straight. Um, I don't know if you can see up close where I am now, but there's no gaps in any of this board. Um, things to consider when doing Herringbone or parquetry floor is your set out. All of our set out is in the hallway. We've gone a board in the middle of the hallway that basically draws your attention all the way through to the doors at the back. Um, it's symmetrical, it's looking good, it's easy done, but you then got to consider your doors. So our doorway is pretty much perfectly square to the room and our lay pattern. So this triangle piece, which is a small piece, is gonna be consistent the whole way along the run of our door. Now you could imagine if this door threshold is at a square by let's say five, 10, 20 millimeters to the room, this triangle piece, which might read like this here, as you come down and it's out of square, is gonna change. And this 
threshold is gonna look rubbish. It's gonna look like a dog's breakfast. So when you're setting out your herringbone floor, always make sure that your lay pattern is square to whichever wall or kitchen or floor that you need it to, to line up with. There's no fixings in the engineered board. It, it's literally sitting on this glue and that's gonna adhere it. So the guys run the middle through first. Essentially that's our set out and the tape locks all of those boards in so there's no movement as we go to lay. Um, you know, if you wanted to do it a dodgy way, you could put a few screws in the top, but you've got to patch it. No one's going to do that, right? So the tape holds it all together. That's what that's about if you're curious, and then you lay out from there into the walls. So yeah, this is looking amazing. Okay, after two. Nice one. Hear from you a bit later. Cheers, Ramonda. Bye. We've been promised a date today, so they're speaking to the head of construction, the pool contractors team. After two o'clock, they reckon they have their little meetings to give us a date, so with a bit of luck, they've got something for us this afternoon and we can schedule around it. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. So we've got this space, which is gonna be a side entrance. Um, although it's not for your main entrance of the house, it's gonna be used quite a lot. Uh, it's brick, it's quite tight. Um, it gets a bit of sun, but not a lot. So a really neat way to bring a space like this to life is by choosing an interesting tile. It's essentially artwork on the floor. Um, options are things like tessellated tiles. Um, you get these beautiful lantern styled tiles. There's also, you know, marble, there's stones, there's large format. There's a whole lot of different choices, but immediately this space is brought to life with the choice of this tile. So a little bit different to a tessellated tile. A tessellated tile is the smaller pieces. You might have triangles, hexagons, rectangles, whatever it is, and they go together. Um, as beautiful as those are, as they are, sometimes they can look, I don't know, a little bit dated, a little bit federation-y. Um, these tiles here really look, really look classy. They, they're beautiful. So yeah, this place is starting to come alive. Um, we've also got some really nice windows in this space as well. So. The green, the reds, and the yellows of the original window, we've matched to this window out here. Uh, there was a window there before, actually. So we've knocked that out and replaced it with what's a, a new version of. Um, so yeah, just giving this space a bit of life. So you're really just invited to come up here. It's starting to look beautiful. Uh, so that gets us into position to finish up the project. Uh, we've got a few big things lined up. One of them being cabinetry, the other being the pool. So. That's our focus now. Everything hinges on those being installed on time. We've got to really stay on top of our contractors to make sure the details and the scope is being met and we're getting them on site on time. So that's us for next week. We're really excited to, I mean, at least get the cabinetry in next week. So yeah, fingers crossed for an install and it's gonna look great when it's all in there.